The meditating trees of Nibia was a carnivorous tree reported by one eyewitness who relate a story in 1881. Author Phil Robinson wrote in Under the Punkin related to the tales of his uncle's travels throughout the world. He described a man-eating tree that was to be found in Nibia. In the tale Robinson's uncle describes the tree this awful plant that rears its splendid death shade in the central of solitude of the Nibian fern forest, sickens by the unwholesome humors of vegetation from the immediate venice and feeds upon wild beasts in the terror of the chase or the heat of the moon. Seek the thick shelter of his bots upon the birds that flitter across the open space, coming within the charmed circle of its power upon even man himself when an infrequent prey savage seeks its asylum in the storm. The story continues in describing how the tree captured and ate one of the uncle's native companions and how uncle proceeded to shoot at the tree when his ammunition was finally exhausted the uncle continued his work using a knife to destroy the tree as the tree fought back with its blood sucking leaves and tangled limbs it's unclear it is unclear if the story is fiction or not but it goes as follows one day leaving my mule with the two people who were pitching a tent for the night. I went on to get my gun, and the boy accompanied me towards the fern forest, which I saw it near in the distance. As I approached it, I found the forest was cut into two with a wide glade. Seeing the small herd of the common antelope, an excellent beast in the pot browsing their way along, I crept after them. Though ignorant of the real danger, the herd was suspicious and slowly trotted along before me. Turning the corner, I suddenly became aware of a solitary tree growing in the middle of the glade. It stuck me at once that this was a tree I had never seen before, but being intent on having venison for supper, so I continued. I ran forward in order to secure it, but the little creature sees me coming, attempting to follow its comrades. All of a sudden, I saw the tree violently grab the creature, and while all the ferns around it were motionless, bounded and swayed back and forth, bounding towards its freshly caught prey, stretched out its hands to engulf the poor creature. And in the next instant, the boy and the deer were beneath the tree. Now there was no mistaking what I saw. The tree was convulsing with motion. The vegetable first discovered my presence about 50 yards back, then became aware of a stealthy motion among the thick leaves, reminded me of some wild beast, slowly gathering itself from a long sleep like a vast coil of snakes in restless motion. I came within 20 yards of it. He was quivering through every branch, muttering for blood, and helpless with rooted feet. Turning with every branch towards me was now within 10 yards of it. Every part of it growing more hysterical with excitement. I was bewildered by terror. Had my senses bewildered me, abandoned me and my knee. I know not, but the tree seemed to be alive, leaning towards me. It seemed to be pulling up its roots from the ground. A mountainous monster with myriad lips mumbling together for my life. One who desperately defends itself from imminent death. I fired my gun at the approaching horror. To my dizzying senses, the shot seemed so far away. The shot had torn its way into the soft body of the great thing. It started to quiver. Now the stiffened, swollen veins and sunk down slowly, noiselessly through the glistening 
leaves. Reloaded and shot again. Vile frag. Fiercely increased and continued to shoot it until my ammunition was exhausted and until the giant was left a wreck as if a hurricane had torn through it. In the ground it laid, heaped together in fragments, struggling, raising, grasping, till there was no more of the creature. Continued firing. Alerted someone on a mule. My companions carried me back to camp. Two or three hours elapsed before I could speak of it. I was still in shock, apparently. I brought the man to where it was, where it was quite dead. Removed the rotting foliage, and there was the remains of previous meals of other humans and creatures that had been feasting on. To remove the leaves would have taken a long time, so we burned the bodies as it was with hundreds of leeches still clinging to it. This is the most disturbing thing I have ever seen.